Greetings from a Saturday morning in bucolic Miraflores, Lima, Peru. You may notice we're filming from a different location half the time, and that's because we spend about half our time living in Lima, Peru. Yeah, so we figured we'd take a second to talk with you about what it's like to live in another country specifically. Well, I, I would well, both say- Both of us have lived all over the place. You know, I lived in Korea for a while. You lived in the UK. I lived in Italy, Scotland. Well, we'll talk about specifically is, is what it's like to be an expat in Peru, which we only, again, do part of the time, but I think there's some really great things and there's some not so great things. So we'll cover both. So Malcolm, you, you always, you have this reputation in our family for always um, thinking that wherever you live is the best place in the world and where everyone else lives is the worst. <laughs> so he, I don't, I don't, I don't, oh, 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 that's unfair. I think a lot of places are the best place in the world. And I think Miraflores is one of them. So tell me what you like about being an expat living in Miraflores, the, one of the nicest, most touristy districts of Lima, Peru's capital. Okay, so the biggest difference for me, and this is something I started to do uh, after I lived in other countries for a while, is I started to focus on the emotional expressions of people and the way they engage with each other. Okay. And Mirror Florida is unique in that nowhere I have been in the entire world do I see as much genuine love or romantic interaction between people. Mm -hmm. I'd say that the, 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 you know, depending on the time of day you're walking around, the majority, more than 50% of people, are either showing affection for a romantic partner, showing affection for a family member, or showing affection towards their child. Yeah, like over here, I can see a, a dad having a picnic with his daughter. Over there, I see a, a man holding a, a baby with a dog that next to him in a stroller. There's uh, pairs of women walking together. Yeah, no, it's, it's very bucolic. And we, we are definitely in, like, there's ocean. There is beautiful, verdant. So you could say it's the region. And I've heard people in Peru, when I talk about, uh, you know, all of this positive emotion I see here, they go, well, that's just because you're in the wealthiest district. And this is. Uh, and so is. We, we are living in, like, the, the privileged oasis. But here's the thing. You don't see this in Manhattan. You don't see this in, in Gangnam. You don't see this in, there is no other place where I have, I've been in the wealthiest district. I've lived in the wealthy districts of a lot of places where you see this level of love and positive emotion just constantly. I will say it's pretty heaven-like. Like it seems, if I had to choose a, a district that would represent heaven, I would choose this one just because of how wholesome everyone's being all the time. Okay, second positive thing. Everything is always improving here. Yeah, you can um, probably hear the sounds of construction in the background. It is hard for us to walk in any part of this city without coming across something being built, fixed up, Or they pass by the ocean. Remember I was like, well, it's a shame they never finished building this and like, isn't this path really nice? Well, let's walk down here and then back up. I'm going to trip and fall and die. Okay, <laughs> well then we won't do that. I don't want you to die. No. But yeah, so you'll walk down a pass at one month and then six months later, you know, it'll be built, you know, like 20 miles going forwards. It's just remarkable the amount of improvement happening constantly. And that's because the economy is good right now, but even with, you know, Peru's major export is mining and minerals. And even with that falling, the economy is still growing. So it's, it's really positive to be in a Latin American country where I feel like the future is pretty secure here, even with the recent electoral stuff. And I could talk about that in a different video. But another thing that's really amazing about living here is the cost of living. <laughs> it's spectacular. We do feel like rich people here. Especially um, if you like good food. Yeah. In America, um, we pretty much just buy like canned food and some vegetables and that's it. So the quote I would use is, so the, um, the, it's, it's the highest ranked um, on the 50 best restaurants in the world. The highest ranked Japanese restaurant is actually here in Peru. And it's the second highest ranked restaurant in the city. There's a number of really high ranked restaurants in the city. Lima's like known for its food. And the most expensive item on the restaurant's menu, this is the most expensive item on like the fifth ranked restaurant in the world's menu. It's called Mido. was around 30 bucks. And 35, I was like- 35, I think. I think it's a little more expensive bucks. now, but I mean, consider how much, like that. that's like a normal, well, not Leon, normal. main dish in, in Manhattan at a fancy restaurant. Or, or a normal, most expensive item on a lot of like mid upper end restaurants. It is insane that this is like the fifth ranked restaurant in the world. Because when you go to other cities and you're eating at these best restaurants in the world, you're paying at least a few hundred dollars. And for the, uh, the 17 the, course tasting menu at Central, and also Central, a top like the super famous restaurant, yeah. you're paying like. I think it's 175 a head. Like 175 a head for That's a not 17 including the, course meal. Yeah. And at the, at the, like the second highest it's restaurant ridiculous. in the world. It's yeah, I mean, ridiculous. usually that the, the kind of like fixed course, fancy, you know, world-class restaurant meal would be 
two hundred to five hundred dollars. Yeah. So that's that's pretty good. Okay. So cost of living. Okay. Um, bonus. Happiness. Bonus. What, what are some new, of the negatives? New growth. You're, I'm you're the one who's stuff. the Debbie Downer with Lima, Peru. Um, mostly because I speak Spanish, which means that when we need to deal with some kind of bureaucracy or bills, that that falls to me. There are some things about bills and whatnot that are really great. Other things I'm not crazy about. Well, let's talk about. about what's great about them. And this is what I love. Oh, uh, yeah. You know, so okay, there's so a lot of stuff that you can just pay for through your bank account really easily. So instead of having like a separate account for billing with your electricity bill, with housing association bills, you just, you, you put in your name and account number in, in BCP, which is the like National Bank of Peru. And you make your payments all through that one app. Well, let's which talk is about great. how our taxes come in, which I love. And I'm, after this video, I'm going to take a little clip of this and show you guys, because we got our taxes recently. They send you like a magazine. And the magazine it's the most is wholesome really well thing done. Ever. It shows, at first, it thanks you for paying your taxes. Yeah. Then it shows you all of the things that your taxes from last year went to, all of the improvements they've made with your taxes, how they're spending them, pie graph breakdown, everything like that. Yeah, and it includes like sweeping pictures of like, oh, the beautiful parks. Look at the, the children's parks that you're building. Yes. Oh. Look at the roads that are being repaired. It's really nice. I mean, I wish that they did it here. What, you mean in the U.S.? Or? Oh, yeah, in the U.S. Sorry, Sorry. that's where my mind stays. Um... But you also, at the end, like, if you're looking at a catalog or something like that, they have the little thing where it's like, just cut this out, put in your credit card number, ship it in, and your taxes will be automatically paid. Don't you wish that worked that way with the IRS? Oh my god. But there's bureaucratic stuff you don't like, so explain that stuff. I don't... Right, so I mean, sometimes things work. Like our electricity bill, uh, usually we can just pay it through uh, but our when bank do they app. Not work? When it do... doesn't work, sometimes they just, like don't properly push through the billing and then oh and then they're like you haven't paid this okay, in six yeah and then they, and they, like, they say you haven't paid your bill but then there's no other way for us to really easily know and then we end up uh with a like an electrician by our apartment about to shut off our electricity and we have to bribe him well, at least the bribes are cheap <laughs> you oh, tried yeah, to bribe him with yeah, 20 dollars, yeah. and the person at the front desk the, the was door, like yeah no. the doorman were like no that's too much so yeah, and what, I guess I can say that people are really nice, um, sort of like that. I mean, there's a lot of other things where like, just to get certain certifications, you have to go to the Peruvian equivalent of the DMV, wait for a long time in lines. It's, it's really weird. Like you have to pay the government at one bank and then go to this other place. So I don't really like the bureaucracy though. I, I would say that it's Well yeah, sometimes they're getting repairs done and they don't really get done. Like Yeah, well, and yet yeah, everything's like a little bit lower quality. So the food is amazing, but after a while, you realize some of the ingredients are just like I just want like a really awesome green bean. Like Yeah, and it's just not it's or not a piece there. Of asparagus yeah. or whatever, right? And the dairy, the dairy is horrible because I mean, who cares about cows in Peru, right? But I hear if you get to go dairy here is good and I've got to say they've got great uh, fruits and I want to do a video where I like go through all the Peruvian fruits because she knows I'm obsessed with them I subject all of the people who come to our house. I'm like you've got to try this. You've got to try this. You've got to try this You've got to try this and they, they all hate it. Yeah, because it's all they're all really inexpensive fruits and they look really They're delicious. Different. They're amazing. They're so healthy. So another thing that I will say is positive is medical care We don't have insurance in Peru though if we wanted to it would be fairly inexpensive and even though we have insurance in America, it sucks because medical care is messed up, as everyone knows in the United States. So yeah, even though we have insurance in the U.S., it's cheaper for us to get without insurance stuff done in Peru. In Peru, yeah. So we don't have insurance in Peru. We have insurance in the U.S., and yet we get most of our procedures oh. in Peru. Because even if we go to a really nice private hospital, like one of the best in the most expensive districts of the entire country, we're still paying less than what we would pay with our insurance in the United States well, for the same procedures. Let's talk about how this works, okay? So let's look at something like getting antibiotics, right? Like I'm sick. So in the U.S., that means I'm going to a general practitioner, they need to decide I'm sick, which I'm paying for yeah. coming out of the insurance, and I get a thing, and then I go to the place and I get the pills. Here, over the counter, I go, antibiotics, cheap. Now, obviously that's not good for antibiotic resistance, and there's a lot of reasons why the world shouldn't operate in that way. But keep in mind, we provide, that we, we get like tons of antibiotics to cows and livestock in the US and stuff like that. But to protect antibiotic resistance, we're doing it in humans? I don't know. Uh, it's more expensive antibiotics than humans, so I've gotta take a step. This, uh, this is kind of a rabbit hole here that uh, we don't wanna get too deep into, but yes, it's much easier to, and much cheaper to get healthcare here. Yeah, and, and medicine in general, which we really appreciate. So, okay, well, let me sum it up as some bureaucratic elements of Peru are annoying. And like cer certain things just take ages and long waiting in line periods. But honestly, 
the, the attitude of, of the country and well, especially the really wealthy neighborhood in which we live and most, I think, foreigners end up going yeah. to. Uh, it's amazing. There's loads of new growth, so it feels like a very optimistic place. The people are amazing. The food and restaurants are amazing. The cost of living is amazing. And if you're coming to Peru, don't just head straight to, uh, oh, what's that word, Machu Picchu? Yes. Which is basically, what, what's your take on Machu Picchu? Just give them that really quickly. Oh man, so I mean it really is not a very old at all, like country state of a wealthy And most of it was person. rebuilt in the 70s. Yeah, that was like abandoned because it's a, it's no one like cared about it. It's like a 70s tourist trip. It's a 70s recreation of what it might have looked like the thing this, that used to be A 70s there. era recreation of an abandoned like vacation house of a wealthy person. And not a terribly accurate one. Yeah. Well, I mean, accurate enough. It, it, it's, it's remarkable for the 70s. I think it fits a romantic ideal that some people have. But I think to sum things up... But spend more time in Miraflores, it's awesome. Yeah. We recommend it. It's a good life. <laughs>